I'm Tom, and this is my wife, Wendy. I own 1,313 acres here in Blair County, Pennsylvania. We've had its perks, you know, being able to just live up here, and we used to camp all the time. We never go camping anymore because we camp every day, I think. Our favorite part is sitting on the back porch when the peepers first come out. You're close to towns. For us, it takes us 15 minutes, but yet we still have the luxury of being out in the country and in the wild. How long have you noticed the bats under the porch here and around the house? First couple times I'd seen it, I looked, and I'm like, there's no bats in there. I kept looking, and there's no bats. Then I'd, I'd listen, I'd hear them, and I'm like, there's bats in there. I can never find them. They're so small. So are all bats threatened? So in, in Pennsylvania, we have, we have two federally listed species. So we have the Indiana bat, which is federally listed as endangered, and then the northern long ear bat, which is federally threatened. This is the aerial photo of my property. There's a well-known cave, the Hartman Mine Cave. Lots and lots of bats winter there. It's called a hibernacula. There's probably about a mile and a half as a crow flies from where they roost inside my house to the cave. We're gonna look at an area that we did some herbicide spraying. I really enjoy white-tailed deer hunting. I manage this property. I've been managing for 20 years with quality deer management, doing the same thing we're doing with the bats to grow better quality white-tail herds. That's my passion, that's my love. So this is a dead barberry. I sprayed them two years ago and they've all died, allowing other stuff to grow. How big is the cave, I mean, in general? It's a pretty large uh, mine. When we do our bat surveys, a lot of times we need binoculars to identify the bats. How many bats do you think are in there, roughly? The last full survey we had was 2015, and we only counted a little over 70 bats. Wow. Which is a dramatic decline, considering the site used to have over 32,000 bats at one point in wow. time. Wow. How long ago was that? This area got white nose in 2012. White nose syndrome is a disease affecting bats um, all up and down the northeast coast of the United States. This fungus was brought inadvertently by cavers visiting Europe. And what we saw was a 99% decline in some of our most common species, one of them being the little brown bat that we'll see here tonight. So it's about 8 p.m. now, and the bats are just starting to wake up for the evening. And what we have here is some, a maternity colony of female little brown bats, and they're uh, roosting here on the property. Hopefully, we will see some bats emerging. The property is really important to the federally endangered Indiana bat. So in cooperation with the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Game Commission, and DCNR, we met with Mr. Belinda and walked his property. And due to the proximity to Canoe Creek State Park and Hibernacula and known maternity colonies, decided this would be a good spot for permanent easement to specifically manage for bats. We were able to work with NRCS through the Healthy Forest Reserve Program to permanently protect over 800 acres of Mr. Belinda's property for the benefit of Indiana bats. I do know some other large landowner friends of mine, and they said I was an idiot for getting the federal government involved in my properties. I look at it, why not use them as an asset instead of an enemy? He has a Japanese barberry problem on the property. It inhibits regeneration of the highly desirable species that we're looking for. So he was provided with um, financial assistance to come out and spray Japanese barberry and other invasive species on the property. They like this area, the bats, because almost every tree you see that's larger than your thigh is a tree species that is of high concern that's good habitat. For instance, you look over there and see an elm tree. As the tree matures, they tend to get those types of bark characteristics that the bats like, and they can just creep right under those crevices and find some place warm. Yeah, yeah, so typically the older the tree, the more nooks and crannies and habitat it's gonna offer. But as part of forest health management, you need those younger age classes coming up to support the next generation of forest and future generations of bats as well. Hopefully, we had bats emerge about 15 minutes ago. At this point, I'm hoping that we caught a couple bats that we can process. Oh, we got a lot of bats.
A lot of the white nose scarring should be pretty well healed up. It shouldn't be as visible as when they first emerge from hibernation, so this bat looks fine. This is such a time that these organisms need our help. If you can imagine, when they used to trap Canoe Creek, this entire basket would be full of bats. They'd just be literally scooping bats out. OK, female little brown adult. It's a great time to bring both the private and public together and really have everyone pull together to try and help save bats right now. Yep, there he goes. It's just been awesome to be able to drive up the lane every day and realize that you can be a steward of something great. There are bats that have found some way to adapt, so it's really a treat to, to recapture some of these bats.